brothers and sisters. Welcome to Begin Toward Turn Him Devotional. 
Today is the 24th day of May, 2020, fourth Sunday of the month. Presiding over this devotional is President Nino Matardo, Second Councilor of Malolos State Presidency. I am Bishop Roberto S. De Leon, conducting under his direction. We would like to acknowledge our chorister, Sister, Sister Christine Joy M. De Leon. To open this devotional, let us sing him number 249, Call to Serve, and the education will be offered to us by Brother Marvin Bacalando. And after which, we will hear the message of President Stephen R. Bandurter, First Counselor of the Area Presidency. And it will be followed by Sister Maureen S. Barilla, then Elder Camposano, the Vinto Missionary, will share his message. Hello, my dear brothers and sisters. Last October, the area presidency received a charge from the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles to introduce to the Philippines the concept of members of the church linking arms with missionaries in the work of the ministry. Never did we imagine what a challenging task that would become as in March of this year, a worldwide pandemic would literally shut down travel and drive us into quarantined conditions. I wondered as cities, provinces, townships, and barangay initiated stringent lockdowns and over 1,600 missionaries were evacuated from the Philippines, how would we ever succeed at linking arms in any ministry under these conditions? Now, brothers and sisters, I know. You have taught me. I have been inspired by things I have seen and heard, and I would like to share with you just a few examples here today. We are so very blessed here in the Philippines. We have serving among us over 2,600 dedicated elder and sister missionaries 
they're all around us. This worldwide pandemic has caused missionaries throughout the world to be called back to their home countries. We have had many return to the Philippines from Europe, Africa, North and Southeast Asia, even from Canada and other parts of North and South America. As a result of this massive movement of missionaries, we now see many nations that, for a time, will have significantly depleted missionary forces among them. But that is not the case here. That is not the case here in the Philippines. This valiant nation where the gospel has only been preached for less than six decades still has a vibrant army of devoted missionaries serving every day from the confines of their apartments. Think of it. Most of their apartments are very small, humble dwellings with not much more than a couple beds, perhaps a small stove, sink, and fridge. No television, no video games, no radio. Yet out of these circumstances, these faithful young missionaries continue to awake in the mornings, exercise, study the scriptures, put on their missionary clothes, and strive best they can, some by smartphones, but most by ordinary cell phones, to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ to anyone and everyone who will listen. Recently, Elder Camolo and Elder Penetrante, serving in the Antipolo mission, asked one of their recent converts if she knew of anyone who might be interested in their message. In response, the Oblea family invited their friend named Menchi to their home, where they introduced her to the missionaries over the phone. Before COVID-19, I don't think I ever imagined introducing someone to the missionaries over the phone, but the Obleas did it. I marvel as I think of what that moment must have been like. Elders Gamolo and Penetrante tell us that the Spirit filled both their apartment and the Oblea's home. As the elders taught and testified of the restoration of the gospel over their cell phone, the Spirit filled their hearts. During the lesson, Sister Novi, who was also a recent convert and was there with them, bore her testimony that what the elders were teaching was true. When the elders asked Menchi how she felt, she replied that she felt the confirming power of the Holy Ghost. Well, every Sunday since, every Sunday since that first lesson, the Obleas have continued to invite Menchi to their home, and she continues happily to come. Together, the Obleas, Menchi, and the missionaries participate in studying Come Follow Me. Last Thursday, Menchi accepted an invitation to be baptized Elder Gamolo and Elder Penetrante testify that they know members and missionaries working together can help each other make this great work move forward even in lockdown conditions. Truly, this is an example of members and missionaries linking arms in the ministry to bring the happiest message the world has ever known to the beautiful people of the Philippines. Elder Cabrera and Elder Magali tell of similar miracles that have happened in the Alangapo mission as members and missionaries have worked together during quarantine to share the gospel. They received a referral from overseas to speak with a grandmother who is a member of the church but had been less active for five years. They met this dear sister for a video chat using their smartphones and learned that she had children and grandchildren who were also interested in their message. The family had previously been ministered to by President Manalato, the branch president of the Kutud branch. All of these connections came together as the missionaries introduced themselves to Sister Rita and began to teach with their smartphone over video chat. Elder Cabrera and Elder Magali declare, quote, Despite our circumstances, it was not a hindrance to us to do missionary work. It takes the spirit, creativity, and determination. We so testify deep in our soul. The Lord prepares his children and his sheep to hear his voice, and he knows them, and they follow him." Close quote. 
Thank you, Elder Cabrera and Elder Magali. And thank you to the wonderful members of the Katud branch for linking arms in this great work. Sisters Corachea, Castillo, and Formalejo serve in the Bacolod Philippines mission. They tell an inspiring story of how they were referred by Sister Dero and her husband to visit with Cosette Amar, who is searching for, the, for a church for her family to attend. Cosette invited the missionaries into her home and the lessons began in January. Soon thereafter, the Amar family began attending church. They were warmly welcomed by the members and Cosette remarked that she had never seen her children so excited as they were after their first primary classes. The members of the ward embraced the Amar family and sisters Corachea, Castillo, and Formalejo relate that they truly felt they were linked together with the members as together they taught, fellowshiped, and strengthened the Amar family. Things were going so well, that is, until the pandemic closed everything down. The sisters tell of the sadness they felt as they were no longer able to visit the Amars nor attend church with them. Nevertheless, they did what they could with their phones. They made calls and sent text messages. Members of the ward tried to stay in touch and continued to minister. The result? A baptism date was set, but sadly had to be canceled later due to travel and quarantine restrictions. The sister missionaries fasted and prayed that somehow the way might open up. Soon President Simogpao and Bishop Mojico counseled together and made a plan for the baptisms to move forward. A date was selected and on May 2nd, Brother Balion, a member of the ward, picked up the sister missionaries and transported them to the meeting house. There, Brother Amar was first baptized, confirmed, and then received the Aaronic Priesthood and was ordained to the office of a priest. He then baptized his wife, their oldest son and daughter, while their two younger children observed at the side of the font. The program was simple. Three members of the ward were able to attend along with the missionaries. These dear sisters testify that the miracles they saw as the family embraced the gospel were made possible because together they and ward members strived to diligently link arms in the Lord's great redemptive work. I've read story after story like this, submitted to me over the past several days by mission presidents throughout the Philippines. Missionaries in the Goa Second Ward speak of teaching a mother in a part member family who is visited and ministered to by a member of the church who lives nearby. Or Minda, not a member of the church, who was being taught by the missionaries before quarantine began. Sister Minda has continued to be taught by the missionaries, but the real strength has come from the Ridonario and Se families in the branch. Together they minister to Minda at their home by sharing their testimonies with her and helping her to see how the gospel can bring true joy despite the challenges that confront us in our lives during this quarantined condition that we live in. The Redonario and Se families are such remarkable examples that Minda continued to want to learn more of the gospel. As a result, the missionaries have taught her the lessons over the phone and on her own, she is reading and praying about the Book of Mormon. Sister Minda has now received a witness from the Holy Ghost that the Book of Mormon is the Word of God, that this is the Lord's Church. With some hesitation, she approached her husband for permission to be baptized. His response? Well, she had asked him for permission before to join other churches, which he had refused. This time, though, was different. She had prayed that he would give his permission, and the Lord had prepared the way. Her husband did grant his permission, and Minda is planning soon to be baptized. Elder Baldoza from the Tacloban Mission explains that these miracles generated by members and missionaries serving together 
continue even after these dear converts enter the waters of baptism. Two recent converts, both baptized on February 22nd, have continued to be ministered to by young single adults of the Tacloban Second Ward. Though nearly two months transpired without the missionaries being able to have any significant contact, the young single adult leaders continue to provide fellowship and support to Brother Nofis and Brother Porneus. In the Karigara First Ward, Sister Panis goes about tirelessly visiting investigators and new converts, providing continuing strength and fellowship even through the limitations that are imposed by this pandemic. Well, these stories go on and on. I send a brief email to the mission presidents that preside over the 23 missions here in the Philippines requesting stories like this, and in just two days they sent dozens and dozens of these accounts. Because of the success and excitement that many have found in this great effort by members and missionaries to link arms in the ministry, the area presidency announces today that each week we will post on the Philippines newsroom and the church's Facebook page a new story about members and missionaries linking arms as they share the gospel with their non-member friends. These members and missionaries have learned for themselves the reality of the Savior's promise given through Joseph Smith. Quote, He that preacheth and he that receiveth understand one another, and both are edified and rejoice together. They have felt together that indeed the worth of souls is great in the sight of God. Close quote. During the six decades from 1830 to 1890, the membership of the church grew to about 188,000 members. That was in 60 years. In less than six decades, the membership of the church in the Philippines has exploded to well over 800,000 members. This is a tribute to the heart and the spirit of the Filipino people. It is a testament of your desire to share the joy of the gospel with your family, friends, and associates. In the midst of this pandemic, people around us are asking more and more questions of eternal significance, the meaning of life, the eternal significance of family relationships, the nature of God, and we have the glorious answers to these questions of the heart. My prayer, dear brothers and sisters, is that we may continue to link arms with this army of dedicated young elders and sisters until the wave of the gospel message floods over the Philippines, filling every heart and every home with the peace and joy of this eternal message. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. My appreciation and gratitude for the bishopric for giving me this opportunity to share this topic linking arms with members and missionaries. I read from one of the conference talks of President Russell M. Nelson, and I would like to share or quote. In a letter to one of his most trusted companions, Paul wrote to young Timothy, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. That counsel is just as valid for us now as it was then. It applies to our full-time missionaries. It applies equally to each member of the church. Whether full-time missionaries or members, we should all be good examples of the believers in Jesus Christ. Like Timothy, most full-time missionaries are young men. Some are sisters. Some are senior missionaries. Missionaries serve to make life better for God's children. Heavenly Father loves every one of His children. He wants to bless them with His greatest gift, that of eternal life. Missionaries so teach wherever they serve. They help people to develop faith in the Lord, repent, be baptized, 
receive the Holy Ghost, receive the ordinances of the temple, and endure faithfully to the end. God's work and glory to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man is also the sacred work and glory of each missionary. Paul's counsel, be thou an example to the believers, applies equally to members. Most have not been and may never be full-time missionaries, but all can be member missionaries. Each member can be an example of the believers. Brothers and sisters, as followers of Jesus Christ, each of us can live in accord with His teachings. We can have a pure heart and clean hands. We can have the image of God engraven upon our countenance. Our good works will be evident to others. The light of the Lord can beam from our eyes. With that radiance, we had better prepare for questions. The Apostle Peter so counseled, Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you, asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you. Let your response be warm and joyful. Let your response be relevant to that individual. Remember, he or she is also a child of God. That very God who dearly wants that person to qualify for eternal life and return to Him one day. We may be very, uh, very want to open the door to His or her salvation and understanding of the doctrine of Christ. After initial response, be ready to take the new step. We may invite our friends to attend, to attend church with us. Many of, of our friends do not know they are welcome in our church buildings. Come and see was the Savior's invitation to those who desired to learn more about Him. An invitation to attend Sunday meeting with you or to participate in a church social or service activity will help to dispel mistaken myths and make visitors feel more comfortable among us. As a member of the church, reach out to those who do not know and greet them warmly. Extend a hand of fellowship to at least one person you did not know, you did not know before. Each day of our lives, strive to enlarge our own circle of friends. We can invite a friend to read the Book of Mormon. Explain that it is not a novel or history book. It is another testament of Jesus Christ. The prophet Joseph Smith said that the Book of Mormon was the most correct of any book on earth and the keystone of our religion. And a man would get nearer to God by abiding by its precept than by any other book. The Book of Mormon teaches of the atonement of Jesus Christ and the instrument by which God will fulfill His ancient promise to gather, to gather scattered Israel in these latter days. Another way that we can share the gospel is to invite friends to meet with full-time missionaries. Those missionaries are called and prepared to teach the gospel. Your friends with your constant reassurance can begin their journey toward salvation and exaltation. The Lord said, Ye are called to bring to pass the gathering of mine elect. For mine elect hear my voice and harden not their hearts. Scripture tells us that there are many yet on the earth who, are, who only kept from the truth because they know not where to, to find it. Now in the day of the internet, there are new and exciting ways we can do missionary work. We can invite friends and neighbors to visit the mormon.org website. If you have blogs and online and social network, you could link your sites to mormon.org and there you can create your own personal profile. Each profile includes an expression of belief, an experience, and a testimony. Each ex ex exemplary follower of Jesus Christ can become an effective member missionary. Members and full-time missionaries may, work, may walk arm in arm in bringing the blessings of the gospel to cherish friends and neighbors. Many of them are of Israel, now being gathered as promised. This is all part of the preparation for the second coming of the Lord. He wants each of us truly to be an example of the believers. I know that God loves all His children. I know that missionary work is the Lord's work. I know that this is the true church and that the Book of Mormon is another testament of Jesus Christ. I know that Prophet Joseph Smith is a true prophet of God and the prophet of restoration. I know that President Russell M. Nelson is our living prophet, seer, and revelator. And I testify all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, sobrang masaya po ka na makapagbahagi po sa inyo ng mensahe po sa araw po na ito. 
At gusto ko pong simulan yung aking mensahe sa tanong na gano'ng kahalaga yung Ibanghelyo na Yeso Kristo sa buhay po natin at gano'ng po kahalaga na ibahagi natin yung Ibanghelyo na Yeso Kristo sa ibang tao. Dalawang libong tao na brothers and sisters ang nakakaraan ng mismo si Yeso Kristo ay pumarito sa mundo upang ibahagi ang kanyang Ibanghelyo at nagbayad sila para sa ating mga kasalanan, para sa atin mismo. Dahil alam ko na malamahal tayo na Yeso Kristo. At syempre brothers and sisters, upang may pakita rin natin yung pagmamahal natin sa Diyos, may pakita natin yung pagmamahal natin sa ibang tao, sa mga anak ng Diyos, ay sa pamagitan ng pagbabahagi ng kanyang ibanghelyo. Alam ko na yung ibanghelyo ni Yeso Kristo ay yung makakapagbigay sa atin ng liwanag, liwanag sa buhay natin, at tutulong sa atin na mas maging malakas sa mga panahon na ito. At gusto ko pong ishare sa inyo, brothers and sisters, sa 3 Nephi chapter 5, verse 13, na sinabi na, Behold, I am disciple of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I have been called of Him to declare His word among His people, that they might have everlasting life. Alam ko po, brothers and sisters, na lahat tayo ay disipulo ni Yeso Kristo, na kung gagawin po natin na i-share yung gospel at sundin yung kanyang mga kautusan. At alam ko na kung gagawin po natin ang mga bagay na ito, tinutulungan po natin yung Diyos na i-build yung kanyang kingdom dito sa mundo. At tinutulungan natin yung ibang tao na magkaroon ng liwanag sa buhay nila at magkaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan. Alam ko po, brothers and sisters, na yung pag-share ng gospel ay sobrang napakalaga. Mismo po sa aking buhay, ay na-experience ko po siya. Na meron akong best friend before mission na five years kami na mag-best friend. At tina- na, nagkaroon ako ng, um, ng desire na ibahagi yung testimony ko sa kanya. At yung dumating yung panahon na sinare ko yung gospel sa kanya at kalauna ay, ay nabinyagan din po siya at naging strong sa simbahan. At alam ko brothers and sisters na maraming tao yung naghihintay na tanggapin yung ibanghelyo pero hindi nila alam kung saan ito hahanapin. At alam ko na tayo yung magiging ilaw, tayo magiging daan para po sa kanila na matanggap nila yung ibanghelyo na Yeso Kristo. Alam ko, brothers and sisters, na sobrang mahalaga ang mga bagay na ito. Mas gusto ko pong i-share sa inyo yung sinabi ni President Thomas S. Monson na Now is the time for members and missionaries to come together and labor in the Lord's vineyard to bring souls unto Him. Alam ko, inibitahan po namin kayo, brothers, brother and sister, na maging part na itong missionary work. At alam ko kung gagawin po natin yung mga bagay na ito, mas mapapalapit tayo, mas mapapalapit yung buhay natin sa Diyos at mas magkakaroon tayo ng kaligayahan na nanggagaling sa pagmamahal ng ating Ama sa Langit. Alam ko, brothers and sisters, nang lahat na ito ay totoo na um, inimbitahan po namin kayo na sa missionary na maging part na itong missionary work. Sa mission may tinatawag po kami na GV, Jesus Invite Friends Find Yours. Na yung gagawin nyo lang po ay magsasend po kayo ng mga names ng inyong kaibigan sa amin ng mga missionaries. At kami po yung bahalan na mag-approach po sa kanila, magpakilala na as a missionary, at tulungan sila na matanggap yung gospel. At um, alam ko, brothers and sisters, kung gagawin natin ito, mas mapapabilis yung trabaho po ng Diyos dito sa mundo, at mas mabibless po yung buhay natin, at mas magkakaroon ng liwanag. At alam ko lahat na ito ay totoo, at iniiwan ko po ito sa pangalan po ni Yeso Kristo. Amen. I want to be a missionary now I don't want to wait until I'm grown I want to share the gospel all of you For I have a testimony of my own I want to tell my friends about our church And the happiness it brings to me I'll tell them how the gospel was restored Tell them how the Book of Mormon came to be Then I can be a missionary now I don't have to wait until I'm grown I'll live each day the best that I know how And I'll see I have a testimony of my own A testimony of my very own 
Bishop Rick would like to extend our gratitude to all the speakers who participated in this devotional. And also a special thanks to our World Technology Specialist, headed by Brother C.J. Robles, for preparing this video. Now our concluding speaker is Brother Ronald Tavia, Sunday School President, and the closing hymn is hymn number 164. Heart ordination and the benediction will be given to us by Sister Alicia Ventura. And good day po sa ating lahat. Uh, ako po ay nagpapasalamat sa Bishop Rick na nabigyan po ako ng pagkakataon na makapagsalta ngayon during this devotional video na sa panahon po natin ngayon sa pandemic. And, uh, alam po, sana po lahat po tayo ay nasa mabuting kalagayan at sana po uh, malagpasan po natin lahat to. Alam ko po malalagpasan po natin to to the help of our Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ with the faith that we have and the prayer that we have, I think, alam ko po na malalagpasan po natin ito. So, ang talk po na binigay sa akin ay linking arms with the members and missionaries. So, ano po ba to? Ano po ba yung mga part na dapat natin ginagampanan sa simbahan? Uh, paano po natin tayo makapag-link arms with members and missionaries? Una po, sa pagbibigay po dapat natin ng mga referral sa missionaries. So, malaking tulong po to sa kanila. As uh, uh, pagbibigay po ng uh, referrals, tayo po ay tinatawag, sabi nga ni President Matador, tayo po ay full-time finders ang simbahan. So, tayo po yung mga maghahanap ng mga referrals para sa missionaries. And on their part, sila naman po yung mga full-time teachers during their time as missionaries. Dapat po, sama, ano, uh, uh, lock hands po tayo, sama-sama po natin, tulong-tulong po tayo sa pagtupad ng ganito. Sa paghahanap ng mga, lalo sa panahon na to na nakikita natin itong mga pandemic na to na, alam natin na medyo malapit na yung end of days, na nandyan na yung mga signs. So, mas, mag, mas madaming souls na makikita yung missionaries, madaming matuturuan, mas madaming po tayong matutulungan. Yan po yung... Um, ano natin uh, divine calling natin ang makita po yung mga uh, mga souls na maibalik sa ating ama sa langit so uh, ano po ba yung mga dapat natin gawin di ba po pagka nagbibig tayo ng referrals uh, tuturoan po sila ng mga missionaries pagka naman po naturoan na sila at nagsisimba na sila so investigators na po sila during this time na investigator po sila dapat po ine-welcome natin sila ng buong puso uh, di ba po, ginagawa natin dapat tinatabihan natin sila uh, ginagayin sa kanila pinapaliwanag sa kanila kung ano yung mga nangyayari kasi bago po sila simbahan during the hymns tuturuan po natin sila sa during the lessons dapat meron pong nagagayin sa kanila ito po yung part natin bilang uh, member sa mga uh, investigators naman na dapat talaga ginagayin natin sila um, dapat din po na during lessons may mga guidance din po sila kasi hindi naman po bigla-bigla nilang malalaman na saan. Ako po during my time as a new member may mga tao po talagang naggabay sa akin ng mga nagturo at tinanggap ako bilang kaibigan. So ito po yung mga panahon na naramdaman ko yung pagmamahal ng mga members isa na rin po ito kung bakit ako tumagal sa simbahan dahil po sa mga members na nag-welcome sa akin ay tinurin po ako dito na rin po akong pamilya nila nandiyan po sila na Navy uh, talagang alam na alam ko na tanggap na tanggap ako welcome uh, parang mother ko na rin po sa simbahan si Nanay B yan sila Tatay B so ngayon po na sila Sister Chong sila Brother Chong na talagang alam nyo po na nag nag uh, may mga concerns sila sa atin. Alam po natin na mahal nila po tayo. So, sana po ganun po yung mga iparamdam natin sa mga bagong members ng simbahan. Malaking tulong po ito para magstay sila sa simbahan. Uh, alam ko po na kaya po natin to sama-sama na maibalik pa ang mga souls sa ating Heavenly Father. Ito po yung master plan niya na tayo po ay makabalik sa Kanya. At alam ko po na kung tayo po ay magtutulong-tulong, uh, 
lalo na sa mga panahon na ganito, uh, alam ko po malalagpas ang po natin to at alam ko po nadadami tayo sa simbahan. Tulong-tulong lang po. Ito po lahat ay iniiwan ko bina, uh, sa pangalan Jesus Christ. Amen. Salamat sa guidance and blessings na nare-receive po nan sa araw-araw. Ama, marami salamat po sa walang sawang pagka-guide po sa amin sa araw-araw. Lalo-lalo na po sa panahon na ito na nakakaranas po kami ng isang problema. Ama, marami salamat po sa mga leaders na walang sawa po nagbibigay sa amin ng inspirational messages. Maraming salamat po sa mga leaders na wala rin po sa wang sumusuporta para po matugunan ang aming mga pangangailangan. Maraming po salamat sa pagmamahal ng bawat isa, lalong lalo na po sa mga kapwa namin members na oras-oras ay nagbibigay ng pagmamahal at tulong mula sa kanila. Maraming salamat po sa buhay naming prophet na si President M. Nelson na andyaan po para po maging inyong gabay at maging daan para po maipahatid ninyo ang inyong pagmamahal sa amin. Maraming salamat po, Ama, dahil alam po namin na hindi niyo po kami pinababayaan. Mahal na mahal po namin kayo, Ama. At lahat ng ito ay iniiwan at dinadalangin namin sa pangalan ng inyong anak na si Jesus Christ. Amen.